Hello, thanks for checking out my video. This is my 75 gallon tank where I got a half dozen angelfish, a pair of peppered quarries, a pair of dojo loaches that I've had for at least 10 years, and a pretty good sized pleco. Um, on this side of my tank, I've got about a third of it planted with uh, live plants, and uh, the angelfish like to hide in there. And it also helps out with filtration and puts oxygen into the water. It'll help to absorb any extra food and fish waste. And I think it, I think it looks, I think it looks good too. Looks better than fake plants. But uh, the problem you have with most standard tank setups is the fluorescent bulbs that come standard with all these things. Uh, doesn't really give you a large enough spectrum of light or the right amount of wattage to successfully grow plants. So. I'm gonna. I failed a few times in the past, so I figured it's got to be my lights. So I'm gonna fix that by showing you how I go about building a new lighting system. And to get started, we'll go out to the garage and show you some basic supplies you'll need to start. Hey everybody! Uh, I'm gonna start off with a little disclaimer that I'm not a professional electrician, carpenter, or anything like that. But uh, I've done a bunch of work here and there, just kind of your average Joe, handyman, weekend warrior type of deal. Kind of a jack of all trades, but a master of none. But uh, there's a project I just finished. March Madness has started, so I had to go and put me a TV out here in the garage so I can keep up with all the games. Um, all the stuff I need, I've already I've already had for a while because I do you know home projects. Done some new wiring in the basement. I've got all the lumber I'm gonna need from old projects and scraps and stuff so I'm not sure how much this would cost you if you went out and bought all the lumber and wiring and screws and all that kind of stuff uh, shouldn't be too expensive of a project uh, but uh, if you gotta go out and buy all these tools and stuff it'll really run up your bill so I'm assuming if you're gonna do something like this you're prepared with a lot of the tools that you're gonna need so uh, I'll just uh, get started showing you some basic stuff that uh, you'll need to start now I'm going to show you the tools I have and what I recommend, but I don't recommend going out and buying these if this is the only project you're going to be doing. I'm making mine out of lumber, like I said, so most, almost all my cuts will be done on my compound miter saw. Uh, it's a great tool to have if you do woodworking like I do and home projects and stuff. I'll make a few cuts on my table saw and my circular saw. I won't use it all, but if that's all you have and you don't care how straight your cuts are and how your project looks you can get by with that uh, your basic stuff like tape measure pencil uh, some type of square to draw straight lines a power drill highly recommended and a good uh, drill bit set I'm doing wood so I'll be using my speed bore for most of it those bits there commonly known as wood bits and maybe using my standard drill bit set once in a while. Uh, a nice driver set is nice to have but not necessary. The drill, the screwdriver bit that comes with a drill like this is about all you'll need. Uh, a four foot drywall square or a four foot level not necessary but I know I'm going to need to draw some long lines, straight lines so they'll come in handy. Uh, a razor knife you might need if you're going to be using wire like this, I've got 12-2 wire extra from outlets I ran in my basement. Uh, those, This kind of wire you don't have to have and can be kind of expensive if this is the only thing you're using it for, but I do a bunch of work so I got extra. Out of that, you'll you use your razor knife to cut open the wire and pull out your hot, which is your black, and your cold or neutral wire which is your white uh, type of wire stripper. I've got I got this set a while back and this this thing's great. It's like a multi-tool like a Leatherman knives and screwdrivers and other stuff in there. That thing works great but if you don't have something like that and you need to get one your generic uh, little wire stripper like that will do the job. They're cheap relatively. Um, I'm only going to need two wire nuts but uh, you might have some laying around but if you gotta buy them they come in small packs like it. I bought this 100 pack because I'll be doing some more work this year. It'll tell you on there what size they're good for. These are for a maximum of three 12 gauge wires. So I've got two 12 gauge, that's all I'll need. 
But if you don't want to go out and get this type of wire or you don't have it laying around and you want to go a cheaper route, you can use an old extension cord or if you got to buy one it'll be a lot cheaper. That's I've got an old I've got plenty of extension cords laying around so that's what I'm going to use to finish off my wiring cuz I'm going to I'm going to use the plug end and uh wire it up to my 12 gauge wire and that's how I'll, I'll plug it in. What I did was I cut off that end and just stripped it out. I traced it back so that on here you got your wide your wide blade and your thin blade. Your wide blade is uh is your cold wire and your uh small blade is your hot wire when wired correctly. So I, I traced it out. I already I spray painted that white so I know that that's the white wire. Um, you'll need some type of light fixture. I'm using something similar to this. Exactly, almost exactly the same but this is an old one from my house that I put up a new light. You can find something like this for about two bucks at your hardware store and I plan on this going well so I'll probably make another light fixture using this one another old old fixture that I pulled out of the house when I changed the light. I'll use that for my 29 gallon tank when I put a new light on there and you'll need some screws um, if you're building a project like this you probably got a lot of these tools and screws laying around I'm gonna be using two inch drywall screws and inch and a quarter drywall screws and that should be about all I need and that's the basics of it so let's get started okay here's a few quick tips before we get started uh, I highly recommend drilling pilot holes for all of your all your holes actually but especially for your screw holes uh, you just get a screw or a, get your drill bit that is a little bit smaller than your screw size and here you can see I did not drill a pilot hole for this one and the screw cracked the wood over here I drilled a pilot hole and it turned out fine so it's something I highly recommend drilling pilot holes and for your other holes, I had to drill holes to run my electric through the wood. I recommend going halfway one way, halfway the other if you're using a wood bit like this. Or if all you have are bits like that, drill a pilot hole and go half whenever you're going to size it up. Use a small bit to start, then move up to the size hole you want, the bit, bit size. Drill halfway from one side and halfway from the other. With a wood bit like this, you drill halfway from the one side and you'll get a hole that comes out on the other side and then that'll line you up and drill back through this way. Um, if you can see here, I did not drill halfway. I just drilled all the way through on this one and you ends up chipping and cracking the wood around the hole. This one I did halfway one side, halfway the other and you get a nice clean edge around both sides. Not really important, just, uh, just makes things a little neater. Uh, with your wiring, you strip the wire about back about a half an inch and then use a pair of needle nose pliers or something to bend over your wire into a hook. Yeah, needle nose pliers, those come in handy too. That's something I forgot before. But when you do it like that and you use it and you go to hook up your wire, you uh, want to loop, loop your wire so that it goes with the direction of the, the screw you're tightening up. So to tighten it up, you're going to go clockwise and that way it'll it'll pull that wire tighter. If you put it the opposite way, when you go to tighten it up clockwise, it's going to want to push that wire out. So, yep, there's just a few quick tips. Now we're ready to get started. 